Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we'll dis discuss how to add tilted windows into a tilted wall. Let's jump to Revit now. In Revit, you'll see here that I've got this uh, mass. Now this mass was, I used a massing tool to create it. And once the mass is created, then we can use, under the massing in sight, we can then create uh, walls and apply them to that mass. So I'm going to click here and here. Now you'll notice that the walls are tilted, so we got some tilted walls. And I'm just going to go ahead and erase that mass that's out of our way. Now you'll see I have these tilted walls, and I can spin around. Now the problem that pops up is we have a tilted wall, and you go to Home, you go to Window, and you go to place a window in, you'll notice that the window doesn't follow. Um, now if you need a custom window, and you're going to be working on uh, creating a window for your scenario, uh, it might be easiest just to create a window that is face-based, uh, and it will follow uh, the actual angle of that wall. So that's what we're going to do here. There's a, uh, different ways of doing it, but this seems pretty straightforward. We'll go up top, we'll drop the R down. Under the R you'll see uh, it's going to come up and ask us for new. We're going to say new family. New. Roll us out. Family. Now, when we roll out the new family, we can roll on down here and you'll see we have lots of different uh, components that we can use. And again, this can be done many different ways. This is just one way that's simple uh, and easy, so you don't have to, uh, it's not, not going to be a lot of problems here. Now we have all these generic models. You'll notice that we have genot, uh, generic model, we have generic model ceiling based, face based, and all these ones that go on down the line here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pick face based. Face based will stick to things. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean if it is actually the wall or ceiling or floor, it's just going to stick to that actual object. Um, I hit open on that. Now, I could go through the basics of creating a family, and we may do that quickly. Uh, I'm going to put in some reference lines here. So I'll put one reference line here. Oh, excuse me, not a reference line. Let me hit undo on that. We'll put a reference plane. So we'll start over with that. Home, reference plane. I'll put one like so. Now I'll put one like so. I'll put one like so. And one like so. Now what this is setting up is uh, so we can actually have parametrics in our family. Now we've got these in. What I'll now put in is some annotation. I'm going to go uh, aligned and I'll go from 1, 2, 3, place it, turn on the equal. Alright, I'll do the same thing here. 1, 2, 3, place it, hit the equal. Okay, so now they're equally spaced. Then I'll put two more dimensions in here. I'll put one from here to here. That is going to set up the, the width and this will set up the height. Now you'll notice that the numbers that are in um, aren't tied to anything. So now we're going to put in the parameters. We come in here and I'll say add a parameter and we'll call this one let's say width and at that time we hit OK and you'll notice that it's now width is equal 36 and we'll do the same thing here. Grab this and set this to uh, this will be height. Alright we hit OK on that and then we're going to go up top and flex the bones of the model or the actual reference planes. We'll set this to 3. We'll set this one to 4 and we hit enter and we hit apply and you'll notice that the, it all moves so we're okay with that now. Now what we're going to do is actually create the solids. The first thing we'll do is create a void. So I'll go up top and hit uh, extrusion. Hit the extrusion. Uh, we'll use a rectangle for simplicity. I pick here. Oop, back up one. Moving too fast. Cancel out of that. Uh, home. Extrusion but actually an extrusion void. Void extrusion. Rectangle because we want to make a hole, so we're going to make a hole here, and whatever we hit, we'll, it'll cut a hole. Now we'll lock it, so the volume, or the negative volume, moves with those bones. And I'm going to hit done with that. Now, if I go to 3D, you notice that it's sitting above the object. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to drag it down a bit. Okay, so now we know it's uh, going through the object. We'll then uh, come up here and cut this through, so we know it's cut through the object. Now, back to the front, uh, we'll go to, let's say, front. Let's go to top. Okay. Alright, so we have the hole. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're actually going to put in uh, maybe a piece of glass and then maybe also a, uh, a frame. So let's do that real quick. Uh, to put in a piece of glass of some sort, we're going to go to do the same thing. Now what I recommend is if you're going to do this, you want to be able to move the glass in and out. So I'm going to go to the front front view and we're doing it looking at it from the side, you'll see the reference level. I'm going to put a reference plane out here in space. Now, uh, this gets a little bit into the families, but we're just going to put this out. Um, 
let's say uh, reference planes on the face we'll put it on the inside so pick here and we'll put it on the inside okay now we're gonna give it a name now by giving it a name I'm gonna call it glass I'm, I know where it is now hit apply on that okay we're good to go now go back to the top or top view and we're gonna now set our work plane to that glass set to the glass by doing this the, the glass will be drawn on the glass level you'll see how this happens in a moment extrusion again I'll use the rectangles uh, just simple here again we can lock all those make sure it works right okay set the thickness to just one inch instead of one foot one inch is easy for you to see in this uh, demonstration if you want to adjust it you can hit check on that okay now we've created that let's take a look at what we've done we're going to go to 3D and you'll see that the glass is actually underneath alright now what we'll do is we're going to now go back to the front view and we're going to add another parameter in here now we probably should have flipped the glass on the other side or extended it down again we can change the extrusion here I'll say 1 here and I'll put 0 here Okay, uh, see how that's done it for us? No, not really. Okay, well, we're now going to set the bones up here. One more home. Let's go back to annotate and we'll go to uh, aligned. Okay, now with this here, we will then take that and go add another parameter and we'll say uh, glass from front wall. All right. Now, if we want to move that around, we can kind of do it by checking it again. Glass from front wall. We'll say actually just maybe uh, zero two enter. Uh, oh, two feet. No, let's try that again. Uh, zero two. Uh, apply. You see that jumps in there. So that's kind of cool. We can move the glass around as needed. Okay. Uh, let's hit all right on that. And last thing we'll do is put in a, a quick mullion. I'm gonna go to 3D again. Easy to do it from this view. Now you see the glass is sitting in there. Um, we probably could have put the mullion in first and then put the glass so it fit correctly, but you're going to get the basic concepts here. Home, sweep. Okay, at this point, drop this down. I'm going to say pick path. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, at this point, we're finished with that. Let's draw the actual, I'm going to sketch in the actual um, mullion assembly. So let's go back to it. So we've finished with that. Edit path profile. Uh, now we'll draw a little rectangle in here again. We could even put in parameters on this if we wanted to. I'm just going to draw it in like so. Now it has a certain size. If we want to add parameters, might as well just do that while we're on the fly here. Um, we don't have to add bones all the time. We can actually come in here and just dimension what's there. So I'm going to hit annotate. Okay. And you'll see it says two inches. And now we'll annotate again. So I'm going to come up top and uh, and what's happening is we're working on a work plane so to see how the dimensions are actually following it. So we'll pick, uh, if we can zoom in close uh, here and here and drag that out to here. Okay. So you see it's just two and four. Kind of big. We can change the scale to adjust that. I'll drop it down to something like so. There we go. Now, at this point, hit escape once, click here, and we will go and say, okay, I want to go to um, add a parameter. And we'll say, um, we'll just call it trim, uh, trim width okay on that and then we'll set this one to trim depth hit okay on that one okay so now if all goes well uh, we're gonna hit finish on this finish it it should create the assembly finish and boop. okay so there it is um, now we've got these two items I'm gonna join them join this item and this item so we can get that to happen Let's go. We're actually going to go back and delete the glass we want, and we can tie it to that end. But for the most part, you can see the glass is in there, uh, and our frame is in there. And probably what I would do now is go back and either so I get those two pieces to join up. If I can actually find them, go to wireframe. Okay. So uh, join uh, this object and this object. Okay. So then it joined. Let's. Uh, escape out of that let's go down to the uh, back to hidden line all right so now we got a little edging there so at this point we sh we should be good to go we can try a few uh, adjustments here 
let's uh, flex the model. This is always good to do when you're finished a model, to just to verify that it works. So we'll change the trip width. Let's change it to four. Uh, hit apply. Okay, now it's got a uh, bigger. Okay, let's change it back to two. Hit apply. Okay, now we'll change the depth from the front. We'll say make that actually four. Apply, and see it pushes itself back. So the window seems to be working quite well now. Uh, what we would do now is go up top, drop this down, and we would save it, and then load into the project. So let's take a look. All right, we're going to go now. Take this and load in the project. And we're going to go to 3D view so we can see what's going on. That's called Family 3. And that's okay. We're going to come here and see how it actually wants to, wants to jump on that face. Now we're going to pick it. And sometimes it'll work nice and sometimes it won't. But there it is. So it actually snapped into the, uh, into the opening for us. Um, so this is a face-based window. If it doesn't work right for some reason, uh, one thing you can do is actually set the work plane. Okay, That uh, does sometimes make a difference. So I'm going to go back and do it again try to pick on this wall. Let's go to Component. That's a component. It's a family and place it there. If it doesn't cut it correctly like it's supposed to do, then set to set to place on face. Um, you can actually set the work plane and place on the work plane and then that would work just fine. So there we go, there's the window and how we set it up. Last thing you have to consider when working with these windows is that we created it as a generic model because the generic model gives us the ability to put it as a face based object. What we need to do is go back and tell Revit that this is not a generic model. See so if I grab on it, it comes up properties, it is a generic model. You'll see right here it says generic models. We need it to be a window. Uh, so to do that, we actually have to go back to the family. So I'm going to hit control tab, switch back, or go to switch windows and go to, let's say, my uh, window now. So here we are on the windows, and if we go up top and under the home tab, you'll see the little category button. It's a little folder. We pick it, and you'll see it's a generic model. What we want to do is tell Revit that it's a window. It will put it in the right category and it will tag it properly. So we hit Windows, we hit OK. And now you'll see it puts the other stuff in here. Now, so we've got our window and we're happy with that. At this point, we're going to say load in the project, overwrite the existing and its parameters so it makes sure it's correct. And now we'll zoom in on it and check it out. Now, when I select the window, you'll notice that it comes up, it says Family 3. Now, where is it grouped? See, it says Windows, and notice it's in the same folder as all the other ones. Now, uh, in a perfect world, we would have taken our time, put the proper materials, give it the proper name, etc. But I just wanted to show you the process to put them in on a tilted angle. Now that that's correct, just to show you there's no smoke and, we window, smoke and mirrors, <laughs> smoke and windows, uh, we're going to uh, hit tag all not tagged. Now I'm going to tell it to tag windows, window tags, and I hit OK. You'll notice that I actually tagged the windows. I don't think there's one here. So it actually tagged the windows in that view. So uh, you can see it's a window. Uh, it didn't put a number because it, the window doesn't have a number in it yet. But if we go to edit type and we scroll on down and we say that is a type mark, let's say uh, 45, 34, we hit OK. You'll see how it tags the windows appropriately. So there we go. It has all the functionality of a window except it can be put, uh, can pretty much snap to anything. So uh, there we go. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us on the web. Uh, we do Auto AutoCAD and Revit training, support, and implementation. You can find us on our web at freerevittraining.com. Thank you.